Hey, this is a video on how I downgrade uh, PlayStation 3. Uh, today we're going to be working on a PlayStation 3 Slim. This is the model uh, CCH2001B. Uh, it's on, it was on uh, firmware 4.60, and I've already taken the liberty of taking it apart and cleaning it up, vacuuming it up a little bit. So we'll get right to it. So the first thing I do is, um, like I said, I take a vacuum with a brush head on it, uh, like this one down here, and uh, I get I'd be careful because if you if you have any damaged parts, it could suck up uh, a little component. But it's really handy to have, especially if you're doing uh, PlayStation downgrades on the regular. So what I do is I uh, I take this all apart and I actually take the fan and heat sink assembly out of the chassis in order to have a little bit better access while I'm downgrading the PlayStation. Uh, if you were to uh, just put the E3 uh, North clip inside, you you may have an issue where you need to reseat it. Then you got to take the whole thing apart. In this manner, it's it's really easy. You can uh, you can have access while it's completely open like this. So I take the uh, thermal paste that's already on there. I don't change it beforehand. I only change it after I'm done the the process because it's relatively short, and um, the old thermal paste, the old dry thermal paste, isn't really gonna uh, get in the way or cause any problems. Uh, a couple of other good cleaning uh, things to have around is some paper towel, uh, a small soft bristle toothbrush, and uh, some 99% alcohol. Uh, let's say it's very dusty, like you can, what could happen is that the dust gets really caked inside and you may need to actually scrub it out a little bit. If you do use 99% alcohol, make sure you let it sit to uh, allow the alcohol to evaporate. What can happen is that the alcohol can hide underneath some of the chips where you can't see it and uh, it can cause some issues later on. So you can see I have this all assembled now. Uh, make sure to plug the fan in. And on this uh, CCH2001 uh, models, you see the, the NOR chip is, is quite visible. So I take the NOR clip uh, I, before maybe I'll, I'll scrub it with some alcohol and soft bristle brush. And then I very gently position it above, and I try and get some direct pressure on top of it. So that should be it. That uh, you don't really need too much pressure. If you do stand, start to need too much pressure, maybe you need to uh, clean out your uh, nor clip a little bit with some alcohol. Uh, now I'm going to plug in my E3 flasher, uh, which is right here and get an SD card, format it to FAT32 and third switch up, all of the switches down, this is for the first initial read and like I mentioned this is on firmware 4.60, the latest one so um, you can't necessarily use the uh, patch um, to patch this firmware, you need uh, a factory service mode dongle for sure in this case. So that's that. Another really important thing is that you keep yourself organized. If you have uh, a small space to work, you, just, you, know, you tend to lose things, lose track of things. So for the purposes of this video, I, I'm, I'm cramming everything together. And you can see I'm having trouble locating my uh, power switchboard. Uh -huh. oh, let's see, for the purposes of the video, I had it in the case there. All right, I'll get this all hooked up to the video so that we could see when the PlayStation is idle. We could start the flash. As soon as you boot the PlayStation, it does a little bit of thinking and it's only when it's idle can you start doing the read. So you can see the E3 flasher has started its blinking lights there. Oh, I forgot to mention today's date is uh, June 29th, 2014. Uh, on the 24th we had a new 4.60 update and uh, we've been waiting uh, for some backup managers to get updated and custom firmers to get released. Today uh, I saw Habib released his uh, new custom firmware 4.60 and a couple of days ago we had Alexander's Furox, which was, uh, he was very quick to release that. Uh, today what I'll be doing is, 
I'll be installing uh, 4.55. Yeah. Okay, now we see the screen it has. Um, just want us to can't find the hard drive, so now we know it's idle. I can go ahead and press the start button on the E3 flasher. Ooh. The lights go out, it starts to read. Once I'm done reading, I'll, I'll use a program, nor inspector, just to do a quick check to see if everything's okay. And uh, I'll go back to writing it to the PlayStation. Aha, so we have an error here, we see. So it seems like it's 1001100. So I'll press the stop button, wait a couple of seconds, and maybe I'll add a little bit of pressure on the E3 clip. And then we'll give it another shot. So once the clip is in, it, it's typically on there. Uh, you don't know. You don't need to really be adding any additional pressure or anything like that. Okay. Now we have a different error here. We have an error zero one. Uh, and continue with zeros. So this error, I believe, uh, is related to the SD card. It needs to be repositioned. So I'm going to take out the SD card. Maybe I'll wipe a little bit of dust. Give it a little blow. Maybe there's a little excess dust in there. And we know it's it's ready to be flashed or ready to start. So I'll press the start button. And we have the error again. So we'll try to rub this down a little bit. Maybe put some pressure on the clip. And we'll give another shot. So if you're not sure on what the error code is, you could check out the error code list on ps3devwiki.com. Uh, uh, they have a very well detailed page on the E3 flasher and other downgrade methods. So another downgrade method that I could use is uh, with a Teensy. Uh, I, I, prim I primarily use the Teensy uh, 2.0++ to do uh, downgrading on my fat uh, PS3 models with the NAND chips. So I, now you can see we have a first solid light. This is indicating that everything is running smoothly. It's doing the read okay. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's reading correctly. So after this is finished, which only takes uh, about a minute or so, uh, we'll check it with our computer. Uh, again, I like to use NOR Inspector. It's very quick and uh, easy to use. Maybe I'll edit this. Okay, just about done here. Great, okay, now, now it's finished. It's flashing the alternating four lights. I'm gonna take the SD card out and turn off the console right away and reboot it. So it's getting ready as I'm checking the NOR chip. So I get some kind of thing you can plus the, plug the SD card into your computer with. And grab your file and drop it in your NOR inspector. So we have, it shows here the 4.60 firmware. The lowest downgrade is 2.70. These are the first things that we should check. And then I'll check the status. Everything seems to be all green. I'm happy. I'm good to go. It is good practice to uh, take multiple copies uh, just to ensure that you're getting consistent reads. 
but for the purposes of this video I'm going to speed it up. So I'm plugging it back in. Uh, I, I switched that first switch down before I booted it back up. We have the on-screen system telling us that it's idle, and I'm going to now press the start button to get the writing going. So this, this part will take about uh, five to ten minutes, depending. So we're going to cut here, and I'll return once this is finished. Okay, we can see the write has finished. I'm going to uh, shut off the console, and I'm going to flip this switch over here, the first one, or the last one rather, to do the downgrade. I already put the E3 downgrader file in there. And now I'm going to boot it up and get ready for another flash. So in this case, you see how it's a good thing to take the top chassis off so you have complete access to the uh, NOR chip in there. Uh, if you have um, uh, seating issues, then you may need to add a little bit more pressure on there. If you still don't get the proper pressure on your uh, NOR clip, uh, it's not a good idea to use foam or, or put uh, pressure on there, but uh, you really should uh, maybe go in there with uh, a sharp tool, maybe a small pin, and try and, and, and pry those little pins back uh, on the E3 clip just ever so slightly and make sure they're very even. So here we go. So it's all ready to go. The PlayStation's idle. I have all these switches down except for the last one is up. And I'm going to start a write one more time. Great. So this one's going to take a little bit longer, maybe 15 minutes, and I'm going to cut and come back when this is done. Okay, so now we're done that third one, uh, the flashing with the downgrade file. So I'm going to turn the system off and unplug everything. Now we're ready to reassemble the system and put it in factory service mode. Typically I would turn it off and let it sit for a little bit so that it cools down because you really shouldn't be playing with the system, opening it up, touching the chips if it's so hot. You could um, inadvertently damage it. But for the purposes of this video, I want to get it through here. So I'm going to gently take this apart, pry it out, set it aside. Power plug. Flip it over here. that away and now is a good time to clean and change the thermal piece. So just get some paper towel and maybe you want to use some alcohol to thoroughly clean it. Uh, here you can see I'm using toilet paper which is actually creating a little bit more of a mess. Uh, I just happen to run out of paper towel. Also, you may want to do this over a garbage can because you see the thermal paste gets brittle and it chunks off and flakes off like that. So now that that's relatively clean, I'll set that aside to clean off the heat sink. And you'll see these heat sinks have a grain. So if you can follow the grain, it makes it a little bit easier to clean it out. That's the direction of that grain, and this grain goes this way. It doesn't have to be super clean. Just make sure you get the majority of the whiteness out. If there's any white stuff sticking around, it uh, could leave a gap, which could create an air pocket, which could create excess heat. So just make sure it's nice and clean. And I'll quickly assemble this. And again, I'm not going to fully assemble this entire thing for the purposes of this video. I just like to get through it rather quickly. So here I'm using 
uh, silicone based, thermal based. You don't need uh, Arctic Silver for the PlayStation 3. The reason being is that um, they have these uh, metal pads on the heat sinks here, um, which make it better, uh, which allow for better heat transfer. So you can see it's very hot over here, and my half empty tomb of thermal paste has separated. So it's very liquidy. So I would, typically I would stick a pin or a toothpick in there and mix it around. But what I'll do is I'll just reach in for another tube of thermal paste I hope I have. Okay, it's always handy to have backups. Great. So on the GPU I'm going to add Fair blob, maybe that's a little bit too much I put there, and on the CPU, relatively nice blob like that. Great. Now, again, this is still warm, so I'm going to be very gentle with it and place it very carefully back onto the heat sinks. Now, since we put a globule of thermal paste on there, try and screw these um, retaining screws in as evenly as possible so that the thermal paste can uh, spread out uh, symmetrically. Great. Okay, so again, I'm going to go, go ahead and I'm going to skip some screws here. I want to get on with this. fan, very important. First thing. Okay. So again, in this demonstration, I use an E3 flasher. E3 flasher isn't the only uh, piece of hardware that can downgrade your uh, NOR consoles. You could use TC 2.0 plus plus, and there are other types of hardware you can use. Okay. All right, quick but efficient. Now I'm going to start plugging the power in the video. And the next step, what we're going to need is we're going to need to put it in factory service mode. So here I already have um, my TNC 2.0 plus plus. I flashed the PS grade uh, hex on there. So now we can just uh, plug it into the USB port to the right. And from my power supply, I'm going to add. 3.3 volts to the rail. Before I turn it on, I ensure there's nothing in the disk drive. And power it on, sequentially power and eject. So this should only take a moment. It'll start up and shut down. And then next time it boots, it'll be in factory service mode. So the next step is what we do is we get our step one files. I already have a USB key set up for that. We see the PlayStation is turned off. I'm all done with my factory service dongle. So I put in my step one files, I turn it back on, and now it'll be doing an installation to the hard drive of the 3.55 firmware. And uh, once this is finished, I'll insert my uh, step two USB stick. Uh, until then, we'll wait and I'll cut here. Okay, so now you can see it just flashed green and turned off. So the next step what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the step one USB stick and I'm going to put on my put in my USB stick with the step two files again to the port to the right and turn it on. Now this will only take a moment and um, it will shut down. What it does is it's this, this step two file is taking us out of factory service mode.
again, we're not getting anything on screen yet. Okay, now it's off. Now we turn it back on. And this time it should give us the Sony welcome screen. So now what I'm going to have to do... Plug in a controller because it's going to ask us to um, set up as if it was a brand new PlayStation. Great, so that's it. Um, if you want to install custom firmware after this, it's a very simple matter of installing the custom firmware. I think it's about 3 o'clock. And I'll skip the internet settings. Now we're on Rise 0 3.55. Uh, the one very important thing I do uh, before I install any custom firmware on top of this one uh, I go ahead and I install Rebug Toolbox. With Rebug Toolbox you can toggle the QA, so this is the primary reason for this. Because we're on Res Zero, uh, not all the features of Rebug Toolbox are compatible, so it's going to give you this warning. The only thing I want to use here is the QA flag toggle, so I'm going to enable that. Exit. And now I'm ready to install whatever custom firmware. Today I'm, I'll be installing 4.55 Rajiro uh, simply because uh, of the compatibility issues. We're still waiting on some updates for the 4.60 custom firmware stuff. Update via storage media. I have the Rajiro 4.55 already set up. And we're all ready to install. So that's it. Thanks for watching. That's how I downgrade uh, PS3 with a Nord chip inside. Cut.